Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing one of the most anticipated floor standing speakers from ELAC, their Vila FS408. The 408 sits beautifully between their much larger, very tall uh, FS409s and the smaller, almost compact floor standing speaker, the 407. The 408 and I've been looking forward to uh, seeing this product in the flesh ever since it was announced. It will sit beautifully in between the two and deliver a prestigious amount of scale for a relatively compact speaker. To give you an idea, this gets down to 28 hertz. Astonishing bass control. It's what ELAC is renowned for and to see such wonderful Deep controlled bass in a relatively compact box is astonishing. Add the fact that it has their Jet 5 tweeter, and we're talking frequency responses uh, up to 50 kilohertz with a brilliant and astonishing detail and transparency throughout all of its range. Right, let's have a look. These speakers are shipped as pairs in two separate cartons. We're going to leave one of them alone and concentrate on the other. Although, as always, Hang around for some photographs at the end. We'll take some close-ups and you'll see the process a little bit more detailed. The speakers are extremely heavy. You will see me struggling with these today. They're almost a two-person lift. The carton is thick, heavyweight cardboard with some basic information declaring the top and um, some branding on one side. There's a sticker on one end with uh, sc uh, sorry, scanning information for the uh, serial number and model number. And then there's a quality control sticker on one end. Opening these boxes is relatively straightforward. It's a simple process of just sort of cutting the tape as shallow as possible to ensure that the knife cannot damage anything underneath. And then because it's also stapled, just sort of tearing the box from there. As always, please get rid of the staples as soon as you have opened it to ensure that those staples can't damage you or your new speakers. I'll just spin them around because there is a warning sticker here that needs uh, some important attention. Um, the speakers do not have speaker grills, and with that, the front is potentially, uh, you know, could potentially be damaged uh, if you don't unpack these correctly. With the physical size and weight of the speakers, I'm not going to lift them out of the box like I have done with the smaller options. I'm simply going to take away a couple of pieces of the packaging and then roll these forward. Now, the process of doing that means that um, you're lifting the lightweight box off the speaker rather than trying to drag the speaker, the heavy speaker, out of the box. It reveals a couple of things, and I'll just put that back in place. First thing, the moulded polystyrene of each end in four parts, so it's very straightforward to get that off. Two at the top, two at the bottom. There's a small accessory pack lodged in the top of the polystyrene, and that accessory pack has the uh, screws and feet associated with the, uh, the foot. There's a steel foot, and we'll see that in a moment. Pausing to have a quick look, you'll see that there's a couple of uh, stick-on pads, there's four, again, hang around for some photographs, I'll take some close-ups. There's four cups, four spikes, an Allen key and some hex screws associated with fitting the plate to the bottom of the speaker. A piece of polystyrene to stop, stop the uh, thing from moving around too much. And then this massive heavy weight box, and we'll get into that in a moment. There's another piece of polystyrene, again, to support the accessories. And finally the end there. Lifting the speaker carefully and then dropping it on the ground away from the last of the packaging is probably the final step. 
Obviously sitting there is the ELAC manual associated with the 408. There's actually a sticker on the back for all the specifications and other things like that. It's worth mentioning it's 4 ohms, uh, rated wattage sort of 40 to 400. So very, very um, accommodating as far as options for amplification. Right, the accessory box. So again, hang around, I'll take some close-ups. But the reason that this box is so heavy apart from basic information, and is a steel plate. Now that plate has uh, pre-tapped four holes to mount in the base of the speaker and then expands out to allow for the outrig of feet and spikes. This adds a significant amount of weight to the speaker, anchoring it to the ground, as well as offering a significant amount of stability as well. The closed cell foam packaging is moulded specifically to the base plate, ensuring it's not going to rock around or move. Now the next step with the speaker is to carefully take the bag off. And because I'm not going to put the base plate on immediately, we're just going to have a look at the speaker. I'm just going to open up the cloth bag that's inside. carefully sort of pull it off the end and then sit the speaker upright temporarily so that we can have a good look at it. So off goes the bag, off goes the polished cloth in a bag and we see some of the most iconic parts of the Elax speakers. Firstly, these are gloss black, and the finish of these is stunning. Again, hang around for some photographs, I'll take some close-ups. A couple of design elements. Firstly, there's no parallel lines in the cabinet. Um, the, the front is curved, along with curved cabinet um, in the corners. It's also tapered, so once sitting, the top uh, is offering a, a, a managed reflection, and the surface has a semi-sort of plastic feel to it. Obviously they've used a, a, a material of some kind to ensure that the reflection is managed. There's even a little seam and that's all part of it as well. The speakers aren't very deep. This is how wonderful they are. I mean, to have this kind of bass control and depth in, in such a compact speaker is unheard of. Again, tapered in all angles and, and much narrower at the back, giving an almost wing-shaped design. Looking to the speaker itself, we see the Jet 5 tweeter, recessed slightly and with a disbursement plate around it. It's protected with a few slots and it means that the disbursement of that high frequency is managed brilliantly through the room. Then we see two 180mm woofers. The crossover network is a two and a half way, so essentially a bookshelf speaker, a reinforced with a bass driver when and when required. These iconic pressed drivers have this lovely sort of triangular texture to it, adding uh, rigidity and allowing uh, ELAC to reduce the mass of the drive unit so that everything works so brilliantly well. Again, there's diffusement in the uh, surround and it looks absolutely lovely. Looking down the speaker, we see the ELAC logo at the base in the middle. Turning it around and having a look at the bottom, we see a tapering effect for the base port. Now, the reason is this foot um, allows for air management brilliantly for the low frequencies and disperses at almost 180 degrees. It means the speakers can be positioned in a more awkward location if required, like closer up to a wall or something along those lines. The end result is a speaker with depth, control and dynamics without so many issues managing air with ports and other things like that. Looking at the back, we see the ELAC uh, logo and branding along with the model number, an emulation of the serial number, and a set of excellent binding posts with lovely fit and finish. They're a five-way binding post and clearly labelled as far as positive and negative. Also ELAC branding on a bridging clip between the high and low frequency binding posts. Again look at the side and this beautiful paint finish, and finally Look at that. Possibly one of my favourite speakers, the ELAC 
Vila 408 floor standing speakers, unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.